Hi everyone, I am Yang Sun Lin from Purdue University. In this talk, I would like to introduce our work, Online Directed Spanners and Standard Forests. This is joint work with Alina Gregorescu and Kent Conrad. I will start by introducing the two main problems of interest. For the directed pair spanners problem, on the input, we're given a directed graph where each edge has a lens that is non-negative. We say that the lens are uniform if they're all ones. For simplicity, if the edges do not label anything, then uh, it is considered as the uniform uh, lens case. We also have terminal pairs, SITIs, with target distances, DI. Our goal is to pick minimum number of edges such that the distance from SI to TI is at most DI, or RI. For example, the red thick edges in this graph form a directed pair I spanner because we can see the distance from S1 to T1 is 3, and the distance from S2 to T2 is at most 2. For the online setting of this problem, the graph is known offline. Our goal is to irrevocably pick minimum total number of edges so that the distance from SI to TI is at most the target distance DI, where SI, TI, and DI arrive one at a time. For example, in the first round, uh, S1, T1 arrives with target distance 3. Then we're going to irrevocably pick edges so that the distance from S1 to T1 is at most 3. In the second round, S2, T2 arrives with target distance 2. Then uh, we're going to irrevocably pick edges so that distance from S2 to T2 is at most 2. Let's move on to the other problem, the directed standard force problem. On the input, we're given a, a directed graph where each edge is associated with a cost that is non-negative. We say that the costs are uniform if they're all ones. For simplicity, if edges are not labeled anything, then it is considered the uniform uh, cost case. We also have terminal pairs, SITI. Our goal is to pick edges so that First, the total cost is minimized. And second, uh, there is an SI to TI pass for all I. So this problem is uh, different from the banner problem, where the objective is to minimize the cost, and we care about reachability instead of distant constraints. So here's an example. Um, of a directed standard forest for this graph, we can see that there's an S1 to T1 path and there is an S2 to T2 path. In the online setting of this problem, uh, our goal is to irrevocably pick edges so that the total cost is minimized and there is an SI to TI path for all I. Here, the graph is known offline and SI TI arrives one at a time. For example, in the first round, we have S1 and T1 then we're going to irrevocably pick edges so that there's an S1 to T1 pass. In the second round, S2 and T2 arrives, then we're going to irrevocably pick more edges so that there's an S2 to T2 path. Let's talk about previous work and our results. Here, I'm going to use N to denote the number of vertices and K to denote the number of terminal pairs. For the previous work, uh, they mostly focus on the offline problem, where the goal is to minimize the approximation ratio, which is the ratio between the approximate solution and the optimal solution. In a paper, in a soda paper back in 2017, uh, there was a result that is uh, roughly order n to the three fifths plus epsilon approximate when um, the edge lengths are uniform for the pairwise spanner problem. Here, whenever I say roughly, um, I mean by losing a factor of at most poly log n. And we can see that uh, the uniform edge lens case for pairwise spanners also implies the same approximation ratio for uh, the uniform cost case for uh, directed standard forests. Since we can just set the distance constraint to infinity. So this also implies that uh, for the directed standard forest problem with uniform cost, uh, there should be um, 
an approximation uh, that is roughly order n to the three fifths plus epsilon. So about and uh, Baldwin, uh, they use a more uh, powerful combinatorial object in one of the case analysis, namely uh, the distance preservers. And by doing this, uh, they were able to obtain a slightly better approximation ratio. There are all there are also other results for directed standard forests uh, when the cost when the costs are general. And the results are in terms of n and k. In the for the online problem, um, the only non-previous result is an roughly order k to the half plus epsilon um, a competitive algorithm for the general cost directed standard forests. And this is by the previous online bad bulk framework, where the standard forest is um, a special case of that problem. Our result mostly focus on um, the, the online problem. Our goal is to minimize the competitive ratio, which is uh, the ratio between the online solution and the offline optimal. We obtain roughly order n to the four fifths uh, for general edge lengths um, in the for the pairwise spanner problem. Uh, for the uniform edge lengths, we obtain roughly order n to the two thirds plus epsilon and um, k to the half plus epsilon. These online algorithms also imply offline algorithms, and we also obtain some new results in the offline. As mentioned earlier, um, the uniform edge lengths. Uh, for pairwise spanners, if there is an algorithm for that problem, then it also implies an algorithm for a uniform cost for a directed standard forest. Therefore, we also obtain order roughly n to the two thirds plus epsilon for the directed standard forest problem when the edge costs are uniform. All our algorithms run in polynomial time. For the purpose of this talk, I will focus on um, the order roughly k to the half plus epsilon, um, a competitive algorithm for the online pairwise spanner problem when edge lengths are uniform. Um, this algorithm is deterministic, while other of uh, our other algorithms they're randomized. Before going into our main result, uh, let me introduce the main tool online covering. For this problem, uh, we're going to minimize um, an inner product of c times x, c and x, where c is an n dimensional positive cost function and x is a vector of variables that is non negative and n dimensional. We're going to minimize this over the constraint um, ax is at least a vector of ones. Here, a um, consists of m covering constraints or rows, and the entries of a, they're all non negative. Uh, people care about um, this kind of linear, pro uh, linear programming in this form because uh, it has a lot of applications. For example, um, set cover, ski rental, and some network optimization problems. In the online setting of this problem, the covering constraints or the rows of A um, arrive one at a time. Namely, M is unknown. Our goal is to irrevocably increase X such that all covering constraints are satisfied. And the objective of uh, ZT times X is approximately minimized. So we can see that if uh, by applying some rounding scheme, if we have um, a fractional solution, then we can potentially um, change some zero values to one values. And this might imply some um, competitive online algorithms. And we can see that this problem naturally extends to a setting where validating constraints are found by a separation oracle. Uh, so M might be exponentially large or unbounded. Then uh, what we are really interested in is, uh, is just the violating constraints, right? So this might imply some um, efficient algorithms, even in the online setting. And this motivates us to show the following theorem. Uh, we show that there exists an order log n competitive online algorithm for online covering, which encounters polynomially many violating constraints. 
The sketch of the proof follows the seminal work by Bookbinder and Nahr back in 2005. Uh, they considered the dual packing problem, and um, they wrote the covering variables as an exponential function of the dual packing variables. And they're going to simultaneously uh, increment the covering variables until the arriving covering constraint is, satis is just satisfied. <coughs> A potential problem for this approach is that um, it might encounter exponentially many validating constraints. So our main tweak here is to increment the covering variables until the covering constraint is satisfied by a factor of two. This ensures that at least one variable is doubled, which also ensures that we're going to encounter polynomially many validating constraints. Uh, this algorithm directly implies a feasibility. Um, to show competitive ratio, uh, we can use the relation between the primal and the dual solutions. Now let's move on to our main result. We show the following theorem. For the online pairwise spanner problem with uniform edge lengths, there exists a deterministic polynomial time algorithm with competitive ratio roughly k to the half plus epsilon for any positive constant epsilon. There are three main ingredients of the proof. First, we have to show the existence of an order square root of k approximate junction tree solution. A junction tree solution is a collection of junction trees. A junction tree is the union of an in arborescence and an out arborescence rooted at the same vertex. Uh, here, for this example, we have a junction tree rooted at R. A junction tree will span a part of the terminal pairs, and a collection of junction trees will span all the terminal pairs, uh, which we will use as an approximate solution uh, for the pairwise spanner. The second ingredient is a reduction from the online directed uh, spanner problem to the online standard label cover problem. So we're going to modify the graph and define an online standard label cover problem on it. A solution for the standard label cover problem corresponds to a junction tree solution, and we can map it back to the original graph. In order to get a better structure uh, from the graph, which we can define an LP later on, uh, we also use the height reduction technique. Um, and these two things in the second bullet, uh, we, uh, we use the ideas from the previous offline um, directed spanner framework. The main difference is that um, since, that, since the, the previously con considered problem is offline, uh, one can use a density argument to pick the best junction tree. And this can be done in a greedy manner. For our purpose, to make things work in the online setting, instead we have to consider the global approximation. So we consider a collection of junction trees instead of considering junction trees one at a time. The last piece is a reduction from the online standard label cover problem to the online undirected uh, forest, standard forest problem. So here is where we use um, the online covering, uh, the, the online covering uh, result. Uh, we also used ideas from uh, the previous uh, online bad bulk framework. So later on, I'll give a pictorial illustration uh, about the flow of the reductions and the proof. So um, in the beginning, we have an online pairwise spanner instance on the graph G, which is given offline. And the terminal pairs and distances arrive online. Since the graph is known offline, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a layered graph G prime and define an online instance of Steiner label cover problem. The reason why we use layered graph is that we recall that uh, the distance, uh, I mean, uh, the edge lengths are uniform. So by using a layered graph, we can open up uh, the path and capture the hard distance constraints. Since a solution of the online labor cover problem corresponds to a junction tree, then we can map back uh, the solution, the junction tree solution um, to the original graph by losing a square root of k factor. Uh, here, later on, whenever the text is in red, it means um, the factor that we're going to lose. 
so what's a stainer label cover problem? Uh, it is a more general case than the group stainer problem. In a group stainer problem, we're going to connect a source, a set of vertices to another set of vertices, uh, where the, the first set of vertices is the source and the second set of vertices is the sink. And it suffices to find one vertex in each to connect them. So this is like um, any pairs that belongs to the Cartesian uh, product of the source and the sink suffices. However, in the standard label cover problem, uh, we consider a subset of the Cartesian product. And this subset can be re uh, regarded as uh, the permissible set of pairs. Um, we need this because not all the pairs are allowed. And we use this to capture the distance uh, constraints. On the other hand, the structure of G prime is not good enough for us to derive an LP. So we further uh, modify the graph G prime and construct an undirected forest H. Um, and we also map the Stainer label cover instance um, from G prime to H as well. And this can be done by the height reduction technique. Um, and from the previous work, uh, one can show that uh, by doing this, uh, we only lose a k to the epsilon um, factor for the solution. So in the previous table, whenever you see the epsilon in the exponent, um, then it pretty much uses um, a similar technique, high, height reduction. Now h has a, a better structure. We are able to derive an online covering LP uh, for the standard label cover problem. So this LP, um, originally, it's not a pure covering problem. Uh, in, instead, it has um, two layers or uh, where there is an underlying or um, in, internal um, LP inside this covering LP. So the internal LP um, in this covering LP is treated as our separation oracle. So that internal LP helps us find violating constraints. Um, from the solution of this LP, we are able to modify um, the undirected forest H a little bit and obtain um, a, a new graph H prime. And we show that we can define an online stainer forest problem on H prime. Um, and this problem will, and this, and the solution that we recover will only lose a factor of two. And it is known that there exists a deterministic um, polylog and competitive algorithm for the undirected standard for its problem. Uh, by combining um, the lost uh, factors, um, we can overall get a roughly order k to the half plus epsilon competitive algorithm. Uh, so this is the high level sketch of uh, the proof. Let me conclude here. Uh, so our results mainly focus on um, online algorithms that are competitive and efficient. The main open problem here is to improve the competitive ratios. As we can see that there is still a small polynomial gap between um, the offline approximation ratio and the online competitive ratio. Thanks.